Well, viewers, to start off with, there are issues BJP is facing in Karnataka. The seat sharing stalemate syndrome seems to have hit the NDA here as well. After Punjab and Bihar, the BJP is now staring at a seat sharing jostle with his ally in Karnataka. The BJP tied, of course, with the JDS in Karnataka for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls, and the seat sharing formula is being worked out. Even though the Saffron Party has already announced 20 candidates so far out of the total 28 seats. Now the JDS is expected to get two seats, at least as of now, Hassan and Mandya. One of which the JDS won last time and the other it lost to a BJP-backed independent candidate after a tough fight last time around. However, the JDS wants more and the BJP at this point in time is unwilling to really let go. Amidst the hectic parlays, H.T. Kumar Swami's recent statement set the cam cat among the pigeons, really. Firstly, you know, he questioned if so many adjustments were worth it for his party if they would get only two seats. He further asserted that the JDS deserves at least three to four seats and that they'd win even if they contested independently. A statement that sounded alarm bells in the NDA and also questioned whether there are cracks out in the open. Now, as soon as the news of the rumbling spread, the BJP immediately entered into damage control mode. Firstly, let's listen in to what Mr. Kumar Swami said and the response that came in from the BJP. I also seen his statement yesterday and I have spoken to our uh, national leaders last night. In turn, I have spoken to our honorable uh, former Prime Minister, Hishri Devadaji also. I have spoken to Devadaji or four. Things, things, things will be resolved amicably. He says that you are not taking him to confidence. He has not been invited for public rallies. He has not been invited for any kind of uh, meetings that has been carried Yesterday out. in Shumoga's rally, JDS district president was there on the dais. Our JDS MLA was also invited. They were also there. There was some communication gap in Gulbarga, but everything will be resolved. Now, that was the BJP's response, but Mr. H.T. Kumar Swami has been dismissing now rumors of any differences between the two parties and has advised the BJP to follow the alliance dharma. There is no difference in our relationship. I requested yesterday BJP or local friends and I command the election dharma, what we have to, Maitri dharma, what we have to follow. I requested both the party workers yesterday you mean to, say that to follow that uh, Maitri Dharma. You mean to say that BJP is not following? There is no different. No, no, no. I requested because I am admitting to the hospital for my treatment. That's why I requested both the parties, workers. Not only I am not uh, advised, I requested BJP friends, even my party workers. Sir, please, 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 without any hurdles. Please take confidence of both the party workers and to win this election, all the 28 cast parliamentary segment. Uh, but of course, the biggest uh, bone of contention here, Mandya, still remains up for grabs. Let's listen to what Mr. Kumar Swami said about that seat. Mandya, after coming from the hospital, I will announce whatever Mandya party workers and Mandya citizens, Mandya voters, what their demand is there, what is their request is there, for that we will abide. Well, meanwhile, the Congress, of course, didn't want to be left behind. They too weighed in with Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shukumar taking a dig at H.T. Devagauda, stating that fielding his son-in-law from the BJP is the first suicidal attempt of the JDS, he said. <laughs>
opening this up to our panelists gs prashant of the bjp is with us today satya prakash spokesperson of the congress prashanti sg from the jds maya sharma senior journalist all of them with us now i am going to take this across to the jds is prashanti first prashanti a very interesting and precarious scenario at this juncture because mandya uh, you know up until now we thought would be a big headache for the jds with sumalata the current sitting mp of course trying pretty hard uh, but it looks like really that is going the jds's way but right now kolar seems to be the bone of contention how is the J jds really putting forth its uh, you know viewpoint here and where do you think lies the problem uh well adipak uh, what actually is happening is uh, uh bjp uh, right now the nda uh, alliance what we have done is not clear about the allocation and we are completely hopeful that kolar is going to be uh, a jds uh, you know jds seat because um, because uh we have just asked for three to four seats that's all and i believe that uh, the nda amisha mr amisha uh, and uh, kumar swami has spoken several times about the seat sharing and uh, we are hopeful that uh, kolar is going to be our uh, you know our uh, seat jds seat and uh, because we have uh, uh, kolar is actually a jds belt if you see if you see the history jds has always been the uh, Uh, sorry the kolar is always been the jds belt and this is why we are hopeful that bjp they will definitely do the needful to the jds party and the and the people of kolar but prashanti also last time for the jds apart from hasan you couldn't really make a dent anywhere else so so where is this confidence that's coming in that uh, kolar is a bastion because probably here uh, if the talks with the bjp aren't going through bjp on its hand does its own set of surveys about which candidate and which party probably will do well in which constituency at this point in time is it more about self esteem and ego of the jds that's coming to the fore <laughs> We have already seven to eight uh, seats, uh, constituencies in Kolar, our JDS constituencies, and uh, that's why we are definitely hopeful. And this time we are not uh, in a mood of giving up uh, on Kolar because Kolar is definitely a JDS belt, and uh, we would definitely go for it. And uh, we have just approximately we have asked three to four, uh, you know, uh, seats. That's all. we was and i hope uh, the nda this is why the uh, alliance we have done and that's where the question mark arises for only two seats i don't think so we would we would have done any kind of alliance <laughs> okay let's have uh, gs prashant respond to that mr prashant that's a very hard statement there for the sake of two constituencies for the sake of two seats was this alliance even required is the question that's coming up deepak firstly it is not about how many seats each one would get but it's about coming together of two parties with a common ambition to ensure that the nda alliance wins 28 out of 28 and once the uh, goal is to win 28 out of 28 the best candidate prashant it's easy for you to say this candidate. when the when and, the jds sure. has amply made it clear that it is about survival for them they want to really you know uh, you know ensure that they survive in the uh, state this is a regional party so this is not all, all about the prime minister or the nda for the jds it's also about you know their party and their interests so you know you are completely put, uh, you know setting that aside when you say that it's not about how many seats it is about how many seats for the jds that's exactly what they are pointing no, out deepak no no the, the emphasis should not be on only the seats because ultimately if you look at uh, if you go by what you said a while ago also saying jds managed to win only one seat last time we have, so based on that strength are we saying that we will give them only one seat no so therefore it is not about how many seats somebody won last time or what is strength understanding the coalition dharma and to ensure that both parties have a win win situation the leadership the high command would arrive at a consensus and seat sharing would be done amicably so they they should not be nobody should jump to conclusion saying that only for two seats we did not do alliance or five it is not about those numbers which are coming out kumar swami has also made it very clear saying that is requesting the cadre and uh, the both parties should work together so therefore there is no question of going back on the alliance or uh, stepping aside it just that in any alliance discussions would take place as to uh, how many seats each party would get and therefore the uh, uh, highest decision making body of both the uh, parties would sit together and decide so what's the qualm about it now
No, but Prashant, it's easy to play the big brother here and say, well, you know, this is how it should go. But but also the questions do arise. It's comfortable for you to sit uh, with 26 seats out of 28 and say, well, uh, this is how it should work. The JDS is definitely here. This is pressure building tactics that's, you know, playing out. And you cannot rule that out. And at, at this juncture with just about, you know, 50 days to go when phase two of Karnataka happens. So you have very little time. And at this juncture, do you really want this uh, to be a tricky scenario for the NDA here in Karnataka? No, see, Deepak, what happens? You look at uh, different states also. For example, take Bihar. BJP is contesting on 17 seats. What it won last time? They've given 16, 16 seats to JDU and five to LJP and one more to Kushwas party. So which means... BJP has been following the coalition dharma. And last time, out of the 17 seats we contested in Bihar, we won all the 17. JDU contested 17, it won 16. So therefore, similarly, if JDS is sought for three seats, and if the discussions are going on as which is the third seat, the uh, both parties should come together and uh, decide. It is too early to say that the alliance is not going on, or there is some brink. See, in any when any two political parties come together for a common cause of winning 20 out of 28 seats for a bigger goal, these discussions will happen. And that is the democracy and that's the beauty of the alliance in NDA. That okay. We do let partners talk. Unlike, unlike the India alliance where each one would go in a different way, you have alliance in uh, Delhi, no alliance in Punjab, no alliance in uh, West Bengal, but you want alliance in, say, Jharkhand or uh, Maharashtra. NDA is not like that. Once you are an NDA ally, wherever your party presence is there and wherever we contest, all the allies will be taken up together. And unlike the uh, India alliance, where uh, maybe for one Lok Sabha seat they'll have alliance <laughs> and uh, for different states, different yardsticks, we don't work like that. Okay, a party with a okay Mr. Prasant, so, uh, you know, this, this entire debate, of course, is uh, as of now about the issue in the NDA in Karnataka. So... Uh, you know, you've, you've thrown the ball once again in the uh, uh, India Alliance court. Uh, let's, let me bring in uh, from the Congress Satya Prakash as well. Satya Prakash, how do you really view I'm this not, uh, you know, scenario? Ready. On one hand, you have I'm KS Ishwarpa uh, causing troubles for the BJP in Shumaga. You have Sadhana Gowda right now threatening that he would contest probably, uh, you know, either independent or from a Congress ticket. Now you have a situation breaking out within uh, the NDA in Karnataka. How is the Congress sitting and, you know, viewing all of this? I am enjoying like I am enjoying this debate, Deepak, Congress is enjoying. <laughs> Today, Congress had told JDS, this is an unholy alliance between a secular party and a communal party. Don't believe Modi and Amit Shah. These Kuchu leaders will... Mind your language, you. Satya Prakash, mind you. your language. Mind your language, One second, Prakash. one second, please. No, no, mind what your language. Way? Okay, if you're not able to really, if you're not able to really hear, hear each of you, Satya Prakash, Satya Prakash, no personal attacks, and let you, I let you complete, and Prashant, you can come in and rebut. You should not. Allow it to happen. Once again, Prashant, Deepak, I am ashamed that the BJP sends Satya yes. Prakash that he can Hold on, hold on, hold on, Prashant. Let, let. And doesn't allow Mr. Satya the Prakash, from other parties Mr. Satya Prakash, you cannot use the words you let, want. Let's keep the debate Please, sane and I, I want you to complete and we'll, we'll, we'll allow Prashant to rebut after that. No, no, I, I, Satya Prakash Prashant, must take allow, back his words. Have, he he can't use point. some derogatory style of words when he's talking to the topmost leaders of our party. Of yes, we have not happened to the show. See, however, the whole show. Okay, okay, okay. Well, 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 hold on, Mr. Satya Prakash. Prashant, what is, what is the issue that you have with the comment? What is the issue that you have with the comment? Prashant. What is the word? He, what is the word he's using for the top leadership? We are not using some derogatory terms for uh, Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. You, if you permit, we can still use. But we do not want to use those words. And what is the language Satya Prakash is employing? Why is why, why is he doing what that? What is the language that I have what used? What did he use? I have said two leaders from two Gujarat leaders. That's it. That means See, leaders from Gujarat. 
Ah, no, simple no, as that. No, no, see, Sandeep no, 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 and remarks here coming in and and you know ruin the debate uh sticky let's stick to the point the Q congress's view point on these cracks that are emerging in the nd and karnataka space for opposition well we seem to have lost the line with mr prakash i'll bring it okay what words okay. am i audible until we fix that i'll bring in maya sharma as well And now you're audible, Satya Prakash. Go ahead. See what I'm trying to tell is these two ahead, leaders ahead, from Gujarat have, yes. have played have played havoc with JDS. This is an unholy alliance between a secular JDS party and a communal BJP party. We always said that this alliance is not going to work. These two leaders from Gujarat have cheated the Karnataka party, Karnataka Karnataka Regional Party JDS. They, they showed that they told them that they will give four or five seats, but today they are limiting to two seats. The problem is today the Modi Modi charisma is on the is waning. People of Karnataka are fed up with Modi. People of Karnataka will not not vote for Modi. Even if JDS had contested alone, it could have easily won two or three seats. Today look at the economy that they are facing. Today they have been given only two seats, and they have put Kumar Swami and Devagoda in a kedda. they can neither go on their own today because they have lost precious time and now modi and amit shah is playing with the regional party today this is exactly what i'm saying these two leaders from gujarat these two come from a okay, communal party the mother and son is ruined the entire country party for a right the italian mother and son and have some patience now why are you behaving like a local okay. bunda have some patience take your Sathya time when you're going to find your language Mind your language. You don't interview. No, why are you interviewing another person? Just don't because you have somebody who is too bad, you have to be like a gentleman. This is not your Congress party meeting. party meeting. This is not your Congress party meeting. Also, this is the worst thing you can use. For all, there may be space, but you can't use this. We don't know. 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 Let's not take this personal. I'll bring in Maya Sharma very quickly, uh, I'll, and I'll give you some time to cool off and once again come back into the debate. Maya, very interesting for the JDS. Of course, they've been mentioning how uh, this alliance is all about the survival, and for survival, of course, they will have to represent enough constituency constituencies in the state, especially you know in South Karnataka region. Mandya goes to them, Hassan goes to them, but now more importantly, another aspect that needs to be considered here is probably in Mandya and Hassan, it's going to be representatives of the family. Uh, and kolar is probably the only way where they could bring in a karyakarta that's what at least it looks like at this point in time so how important do you think that this third seat for the jds is going to be and do you feel that if the bjp does not give them that that they'll actually pull the rug on the alliance well it will be a little late in the day for the jds to actually walk away which is why they are really bargaining hard for another seat as uh, prashanti said for two seats an alliance may not really have been worth it i think they'd have tried their luck in more in more seats because of course it's not as if the jds is not bringing anything to the table they do have a considerable clout in old mysore they do have a clout there and it is a region of karnataka the southern region of karnataka where the bjp has not really been able to make any significant inroads so the jds by bringing that to the table will certainly hope that even if they're not getting seats in north karnataka or coastal karnataka that they would be given tickets for their party people in this region of old mysore a little bit of disturbance also that the bjp went ahead and announced 20 candidates for 20 seats possibly without really taking the jds into confidence for that it is a little late though for the jds to back out yes as you said the mandya hasan seats which they are likely to get are likely to go to family members and even kolar is there is there talk of a nikhil contesting there it, it it is needed to show that it's not just a family party and interestingly of course crossing the divide we also have Dr Manjunath standing from the BJP in Bengaluru rural and he is of course they've got a yeah. son in law as well as being a noted cardiologist so it, it's the desire for the JDS to appear more than a political party to get more than two seats it's a very genuine desire because they want to get something out of this alliance also they do believe that they can deliver seats in the old mysore region they believe they're bringing something to the table and they want the BJP to 
obliged. But it must be said that leaders of both parties, whether it's Vijendra or Kumaraswamy, are all saying everything is fine, everything is fine, the alliance is on. So it would be interesting to see what goes on ahead and how much of a sticking point the seat of Kola will really be. Absolutely. Uh, Maya, uh, I'll take this back to the BJP because, uh, you know, Prashant, we were just discussing about how uh, the JDS continues to have a little bit of a clout or, or, or strong clout, considerably larger, you would say, uh, than the BJP, especially in the old Mysore region. Mandya, uh, you know, there is, has been a decision that it will go to the JDS Hassan as well. But as far as, you know, winning Mysore is concerned, as far as winning Bengaluru Rural is concerned, as far as winning Tumkuru is concerned, for the BJP, it will probably need, uh, you know, that extra support from the JDS as well. And to be comfortable and not really worry about the Congress party and, uh, and you know, unanimity and the complete force of the CADA coming together for that uh, to ensure that you pacify the JDS isn't that equally important? Actually, Deepak, at no point in time we are saying that an ally is not important at all. And we stitch an alliance only based on strengths of both the parties, which means for no reason uh, a national party like BJP would say we want an uh, alliance with JDS. And similarly, JDS also wholeheartedly has accepted that Prime Minister Modi should come back for a third term. And in that pursuit, we have come together to get 20 to 28. And in that particular working arrangement, wherein, yes, definitely JDS has its own strongholds and its core voter base. And we are also desiring that the entire vote base shifts en masse to BJP so that our ambition of 28 out of 28 is uh, met. And at the same time, yes, now as it is coming out in the media that there is some uh, reports of some, uh, what do you say, seat sharing talks for one seat, which is apparently not been decided. And one, the leaders of the, both the parties sit together and they discuss, and it, everything will be go, good. I think uh, there is no need to worry. One thing I can assure the Indy Alliance is that they can prepare themselves to sit in opposition for the next 10 years comfortably, and they'll have enough and more space in the opposition bench in the Lok Sabha. So the Congress need not worry about space at all. Opposition has its space and they will get the space in the opposition benches in the Lok Sabha and enough and more. And it will be really fortunate that if Congress at least becomes the principal okay. opposition party, but the surveys are predicting that Congress will not even cross 40 seats. But anyway, uh, not, uh, we are talking to a party which is not even a principal opposition party in the Lok Sabha. So therefore, let them have their uh, rumblings here. Okay, Prashanti, uh, you know, you heard the BJP, you know, say uh, quite a few things. Uh, I want you to come in here, uh, you know, respond to a few aspects. They say that, you know, I, I during an alliance, winability is, a, uh, is an aspect that needs to be considered. I, I, various I, 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 various scenarios, of course, have come into the picture where the BJP has compromised on its the number of seats that it's going to contest in other states. But in Karnataka, it looks like winability is the top criteria. And they're saying this means no disrespect to its alliance partner, the JDS. How are you really viewing it? How are the uh, you know uh, JDS workers really viewing this? Is it me? Hello. Yes, Prashanti. Is it me? Are you Prashanti, asking the question to me, Deepak? Okay. It's for you. Yes. So, Deepak, okay, yes, fine. I you. would, I would definitely like to clarify Satya Prakash that we are a little displeasure about the seat over the seat sharing, not the ties with the BJP, okay? I think he's been time and again telling that this is what we have said. The Congress has always been, you know, luring our members, JDS members, by accusations. And I, I would appreciate uh, Mr. Uh, Satya Prakash to avoid and uh, uh, try to understand the problem we are facing. We, it's just a displeasure, but we are not going, we have the ties and we completely trust uh, the NDA uh, in an alliance because uh, Kumar Swami has spoken many a times with Amit Shah and he has made them clear about the strongholds in different, different, uh, you know, regions. And I believe that Amit Shah also would definitely understand and he would come 
positively to JDS, and that's what we are saying. But please do not uh, try to, uh, you know, make a hangama out of, okay, there is, a, uh, you know, uh, there is a, a complete uh, displeasure with uh, JDS and uh, BJP ties. No, it's just over the seat sharing, and we will talk amicably and solve it. Please do not cook up stories like the way you Congress people always do. Okay, okay. okay. you will amicably you. solve it. Okay, pra Prashanti, also respond to the BJP here. Also respond to the BJP. You did respond to the Congress spokesperson. Please respond to what Mr. G.S. Prashant said too. See, actually, uh, Deepak, uh, here, uh, Kumar Swami asserts, saying that he has not uh, uh, received any kind of clarity from the NDA uh, alliance. So he is just going, he would definitely go to Amisha and talk about the uh, talk about the Kolar issues, whatever possible. And we definitely, you know, we are positive that Kolar is going to be our seats. But anyway, uh, whatever, we are not going to break up ties with uh, the NDA. That, uh, that would be the dream for Congress, I guess. Okay, ties are, are not going, going anywhere. Yes. Uh, because uh, BJP is always the understanding. We are working together. Well, uh, some displeasure. Well, even Mr. Satya Prakash, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I want you to come in. It seems like, you know, uh, both the JDS and the BJP have uh, patched up quite well. Not, not as uh, convenient as you were hoping it could be. No, it is going to be... Uh, <laughs> see, you have to talk about Congress also here. The Congress, they That's, themselves have okay. a big-time displeasure. Oh, Prashanti, let, let Satya Prakash come in. I have a little time left. Oh, if they wanted to do, if they wanted to do a show to patch up BJP and JDS, why did you call me at all? Because in 20 minutes, you didn't even give one minute of time to me. Anyway, I would like to respond to both JDS. Prashanti, it is not our business to keep your party afloat. Congress doesn't have a responsibility to keep JDS alive in this state. It is you and your legislatures and your leadership's responsibility to keep it alive. Coming back to Mr. Prashant, Mungeri Lal Ki Haseen Sapne, whatever you are thinking, know that we will be in opposition. 15 or 20 years back, there was a serial, Mungeri Lal Ki Haseen Sapne, ye jo Modi jo Mungeri Lal Ki Haseen Sapne dekh rahe na, and he had given a 100 days program for, it, for its government. That Sapne will not become true. Abhi ki bar, Karnataka, Modi se, Karnataka se, Modi Bahar, not 400, Abki Bar, not 400 seats. Karnataka will throw Modi out because what has he done for Karnataka? To 200 taluks are under severe drought. Not even a single paisa Modi has given to Karnataka. With what face will Modi come to Karnataka, you tell me? Every time he comes to Karnataka, people will ask Mr. Modi, what have you given to Karnataka? Why have you given stepmotherly treatment to Karnataka? When you have given 38 paisa out of every one rupee you get for Gujarat, why okay. is it that you have given 13 paisa for Karnataka? Absolutely. People of Karnataka, lies, Mr. Prakash, Modi. you are blabbering lies on national television. People of Karnataka, this number is Modi, Modi, I can do you wrong Karnataka. when your numbers right away here. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay Satya Prakash, I have 30 seconds left. I, I, I'll why come to Prashant. 30 seconds, Prashant, go ahead. It is completely incorrect. I think this guy is understand how he is making. This guy is giving you the devolution of taxes. How to behave on a national TV. Yeah. He has his family and every time the anchor gives me time. Hold on, hold on, Satya Prakash. I've, I've given you ample time to you know, speak. I'll just give about 30 seconds to Prashant. I'll, I'll wrap after that. Prashant, quickly. During my time also, he pokes his nose. What is this guy? Prashant, quickly. 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 Prashant, there is not a you single rupee due from the center of the state. Yeah. Congress is trying to divert the attention here, even here, trying to talk about some issues which are not existent, trying to say that Congress has understood very well that BJP is causing 400. Therefore, they're trying to now have an escape route. Their leaders are not even wanting to contest local elections. They're running away. 
There is so called leader Rahul Gandhi is running from state to state which which okay. seat to choose from. He doesn't have a seat and he has to choose a seat in Kerala. Okay, viewers. Which is all right. All right. Prashant and Satya Prakash. Thank you. Ma thanking Maya Sharma and Prashanti as well. The the JDS and the BJP believes they'll be able to reconcile, settle these differences, and the alliance will be together. But you know, it's just a few days to go before the announcement comes in. Eight more seats to go. As far as Karnataka is concerned, can they can the India really keep their house? in order before the announcement is the biggest question the two parties at this point in time seems like you know at least they want to you know say it that they will whether the cadres on the ground will continue to resonate the same voice that remains to be seen with that i'm slipping into a quick break on the other side news and updates will continue stay with us